Hey fellow dividend and value investors, welcome back to another video on this channel. This time I would like to discuss Siemens with you. They just released their annual report and it's one of those moments when I like to re-educate myself on the business. Is the business doing well? What are their expectations? And are they actually living up to it? At the same time it allows me to re-evaluate the stocks so that I know exactly when is the time to buy again. We typically only need to do this once a year, so just have your coffee or tea ready and let's get started. So people that are following me, they know this and I can't reiterate it enough times. So first of all, I look at a business where it has a strong catalyst and moat because we want to understand whether this company can grow into the future. Then I look at the financial statements. Then I look at can the company actually continue to grow its dividend? Is the dividend safe? And ultimately, we want to judge whether this company is not just a good company, but also trading at a reasonable price. Okay, so let's have a look at the annual report. What I would like to show you first is actually how the report looks itself and, and why you should read annual reports. So look, it's really simple. If you download the report from Siemens, you've got an excellent overview of what the company is actually doing. Just an example, here you see it already if you look at the table of contacts. It starts with its financial performance system, segment information, so which segments are there in the business, how they are doing, and then starts looking at the operations. It's exactly how I'm evaluating a business as well. I first look into what is the business like, what are their growth trends and such, and then I start looking at the finances. And we want to do it like that because if we start with the finances first, we might get biased. We might look at historical performances that look good, but maybe the forward business is actually Actually not doing so well hence I always would like to see how the business is doing first before I start looking into the finances before I start doing valuation otherwise it's for me just senseless to to even consider buying an uh, buying a stock and I'm really from that point of view a Peter Lynch supporter just look around you observe the world around you and try to understand what you own so in that case I've done my analysis already a little bit and what I would like to show you here is like what better intro to get from the organization itself about their business. So we learn here quickly which business segments they have, but also further on, we learn actually where the revenue growth comes from. What are their targets? What are their uh, future prospects? It's all written in here. And, and as you can see, it took me an hour to analyze the report. And it's not that long if you think about it. I own like 40 companies. I'm having a strong conviction of 20 companies that I really want to own. So it will take me 20 hours a year to, to really understand these companies. So having this in mind, I'll share with you now my main notes and main observations from the annual report before we dive into the stock valuation. So Siemens as a company earned last year around 62.2 billion in revenues. And it did this via four main business segments. The first one is Siemens Health Veneers. You need to know that Siemens Health Veneers is a company on its own, but the company, Siemens in this case, owns 79% after the spin-off earlier a few years ago. Siemens Health Veneers is a global provider of healthcare solutions and services, and it develops, manufactures, and sells a diverse range of innovative diagnostic and therapeutic products and services to healthcare providers. Their revenue last year was 18 billion, which equates to approximately 30% of total revenues. The second one, and that's actually one of the businesses that I'm most excited about, is Digital Industries, because it offers a comprehensive product portfolio and system solutions for automation used in discrete and process industries. My buddy engineer, My Freedom, with whom I have the Dividend Talk podcast, really knows their products and is actually a consumer of their products on his day-to-day -day work. This company spotted last year 16.5 billion in revenues. That's approximately one-fourth of total revenues of the entire company. The third business uh, unit is the smart infrastructure and offers product systems and solution services and software to support a sustainable transition in energy generation sources from fossil to renewable and the transition to smarter, more sustainable buildings and communities. So this is really your new energy play. They are really big into this. And this one also made around 15 billion last year and is currently accounting for around 24% of their business in revenue. And the fourth segment is mobility with 9.2 billion in revenues last year, which approximately means 14.9% in revenues. It combines actually all the Siemens businesses in the area of passenger and freight transportation. Last but not least, they have also a small segment called portfolio companies, approximately 5% call this the, the leftover or the other bucket in which they have typically still some stakes in companies. For instance, they spun off Siemens Energy uh, last year and they couldn't spin off all 
everything from the energy business because of regulatory requirements and such. Hence, they have still a little bit of that in their portfolio. So let's also look then at their updated guidances. So what they did is they increased their revenue growth expectations for the upcoming few years uh, from 4 to 6% to 5 to 7% because they are a bit more bullish on the future than the, than the past. And it is also after they made several you know, portfolio calibrations over the last few years by spinning off some businesses and they're acquiring small businesses. So they really went into more higher growth industries and I think also combined with secular growth trends. This has also led to an increased margin guidance. So what we can see here is that the digital industries and the Siemens health veneers are the highest margin businesses. It also equates to 55% of their revenues and they are around 17 to 23% in margin. But also smart infrastructure and mobility have increased their margins, uh, margin guidance from uh, 10 to 15, I believe, to 11 and 16 and from 9 till 12 to 10 to 13. So minor upgrades, but from a margin point of view, this trickles down to the earnings. So this means also with that, there are a little bit more bullish on their earnings and you can see that here they are talking about an EPS for fiscal 2021 that was 8.32 uh, euros I'm not using this number they are using this for operational comparisons but this is really adjusted for for instance acquisitions because they pay for instance goodwill and such on the companies that they are buying and they want to also make sure that we as an investor have a better way to compare I like it how they are looking at it, but somehow these numbers look higher than the IFRS approved earnings. So I'd rather go with the IFRS in this point of view. But also they look at the return on capital employed, which their overall goal is to be 15% to 20%. This is kind of a mixture of re return on invested capital and return on equity. And this is Siemens way of, of pr proving how effective they are in employing their capital. Last but not least, they also expect that the dividend will continue to grow over the upcoming next years and this is really good for us to understand the shareholders because this is what we are mainly investing for as dividend growth investors so if we look at digital industries i we can effectively say that the industry is really digitalizing and this is what also the main trend is for this segment upcoming think about all the refineries all these smart facilities plans they're often still really in an analog world and a lot of this still has an opportunity to become digital which gives those businesses again a lot of information that they can optimize their facilities with smart infrastructure is really focused on the human-centric buildings because cities are becoming more crowded more people live on a small place so there's a huge trend to improve on this but at the same time also decarbonization so also here with smart infrastructures think also about smart grid and utilities and such there's a lot of opportunity here next one is mobility and here we're really looking again at the urbanization think about public transport trams trains metros a lot to improve here and, uh, and you know Siemens has their portfolio there to support those cities Last but not least, if we look at Siemens Health Veneers, they are really a diagnostics company for a large part. And there are a lot of trends going on, specifically in the emerging and developing economies that are becoming much more, much richer. And that's also how then their patients get access to more modern uh, facilities. And Siemens can definitely help here. But also the aging population, which we see also if we analyze Big Pharma. Siemens is playing on the similar trends, and I think they are really well positioned in this. So trends are nice, but how they are doing then? Because what I also like to do is like, okay, it's nice that they increase their margin guidance and such, but how have they been doing then? And what is disappointing for me here is a little bit to see how mobility is performing, definitely under the expectations here. But okay, I read a little bit more in the report and we, we must say, you know, with COVID-19 and the increased depth and the increased focus of the, of, of the government's focus on their citizens now when it comes to their health, I understand that some of the, for instance, major uh, requests for proposal and tenders have been postponed this has been impacting definitely the mobility business here because it depends a lot on governmental contracts other than that for me also Siemens Health Veneers has been a bit disappointing but also here again COVID-19 kept really a lot of patients away from normal standard procedures which where Siemens Health Veneers is also getting most of their income yes they had also some positivity around COVID diagnostics and such but it's not been enough to offset these uh, lower margins so now that we know this, we understand the business, we understand the trends are, we understand how they are walking the talk. Let's have a look into their financial performance because now it's time to really start looking at this.
Okay, if we look at the earnings, um, we can see that there are really mixed earnings over time. In 2011, they were already earning 6.5 euro and they're still at that level. You can see it has been fluctuating all the time, while in the meantime also revenue declined. Now, why is this? They have been spinning off uh, companies effectively. And for instance, in 2020, compared to 2019, you see a big gap because they spun off Siemens Energy, a low margin business. We got some shares for it as shareholders. And by the way, disclaimer, I own few shares in, uh, in Siemens. But what you can see here is just there for a really big drop because they spun off a low margin business. Well, at the same time, you can also see that spinning of these businesses has heavily bumped their gross margin. And this is something that the company has been really focused on over the last several years. From a free cash flow point of view, we can see that the company has been steadily increasing. And this is what I really like to see because in the earnings, you can do a lot of modifications, a lot of portfolio adjustments to, to that has been definitely impacting the earnings here. But when we look at it from free cash flow point of view, it looks quite good on the other hand. And at the moment, in the last year alone, they earned 10 euros in free cash flow compared to 7 euros like five years ago. If we look then at the balance sheet, um, the balance sheet is for me rock solid, but we need to look also a little bit into the goodwill. The goodwill has been steady over time. We can see a drop here because with the spin-off of the energy business went down, but also Siemens Healthineer has just bought a company, I will show you that soon, which increased the amount of goodwill again. But we need to be aware of this because this might be actually a potential for future write-offs if those companies that they acquired are not performing as, their, as per their expectations. From a shareholder equity point of view, the same the drop in 2020 has to do with the spin-off of the business but based on last year's earnings and massive cash flow they have been able to increase quite a lot of the stockholders equity again so here it comes then to the recent major transactions well because for instance what is really interesting here general electric for me is a failed business they did everything wrong that you could do you know opportunistic acquisitions uh, cooking the books effectively siemens didn't do that yeah so if we compare the performance of siemens and general electric over the last 10 years we can generally see that these industrial companies have been struggling in the age of you know technology let's say this was not the decade of these big industrials but Siemens still exists much better than General Electric it's a profitable business and has continued to pay their dividends that's the main difference between the quality of management between those, those, those two companies and I believe that Siemens is often not enough appreciated for this but what we can also see from earlier this year is that Siemens Healthineers acquired Fiarian, I don't know if I pronounce it well, for 13.9 billion. This is a large acquisition and it's an acquisition really focused on in increasing their um, space into the, in the, into the cancer care and specifically around radiation oncology and digital solutions and applications related to that. I find this a really interesting acquisition and I think this is also a really good in acquisition because if we look at cancer and the trend and personalized healthcare, I think this is one of the big major trends that we need to solve as a society and that is to reduce cancer and to cure cancer. Okay, this was a brief overview of their financial performance. Let's also look now into shareholder returns because this is one of the most important things for me as a dividend investor. Now, if we look at it the, from a dividend point of view, you can see the trend line here already from 1 euro to 4 euros over the last 20 years. That in itself is quite a good return on investment. Yeah. So we are talking here about a, approximately over the last 20 years of a 7% compounded annual growth rate. Well, they have been able to keep the payout ratio rather on around the 50% with some spikes in the last five years where it went a little bit up. Um, dividend yield is currently 2.73% with a free cash flow payout ratio of 40%. But as you can see, we had a dividend cut last year. Now, some people don't call this a dividend cut because the spin-off of energy business from by Siemens has reduced the dividend at the time from €3.90 Euro to €3.50. Euro but the thing is, Siemens Energy is not paying a dividend. So for me, this was, this was effectively a dividend cut. Otherwise, they would have a dividend growth track record, track record of more than 20 years. Um, but if we look then at the last five years, you can see there was hardly dividend growth here and therefore only there was an annualized dividend growth of 2.71%. This is below what I like to see, so I'm not too happy about this uh, when taking Siemens as an investment into account. So there's still another way on how a company can reward us as shareholders and that's buybacks. Siemens has a buyback program, they just finished theirs of 3 billion that was running from 28 
2019 till 2021 and they just announced another 3 billion in share buyback program from 2022 to 2026. This will approximately allow them to buy back 2.5% of their shares based on the current market cap. It's really not that much, so it's not a strong buyback program, um, but you know, better something than nothing, I would say. So from a shareholder return point of view, I would say it's so-so. Let's look a little bit also into the risk before we go to the valuation. I see four main risks. So continued COVID-19 might be a pro problem for the company to make better earnings in 2022. But you know, there's also cyclical business by its nature as an industrial company. So an economic downturn can really, really bring the share price down. You need to be uh, aware of that. But having said that, it might not necessarily mean a dividend cut, of course. Um, what I also took from the annual report is the over expectations in the construction business. They are doing a lot of uh, work there with capital projects and such. And when I read the auditor report part of the the uh, annual report they really made this a highlight because of uh, management uh, dependent expectations there so it's not a lot of um, hard math that you can do there so if management is opportunistic if management is thinking too good about themselves this can severely impact the returns uh, reported in the annual report and the auditors made this a second point they really uh, wanted to highlight as an uncertainty when it comes to the numbers of the report last but not least Siemens themselves also report that disruptive technology can really bring this company uh, severe uh, headwinds. Um, I, I think that the company has a large moat so, and, and there are really high entry barriers to this industry. So I don't see small fintech companies uh, as an example or other small tech companies suddenly to disrupt this kind of industry. Maybe in the future, but I don't see it so much, but it is a risk. So it's important to take these in account, but let's look now at the valuation of the company. First of all, the basic metrics, they don't look so good. You see too much orange and red here. Dividend yield is relatively low, below my 2.75% entry criteria. Um, also, the PE is relatively high, 24 for an industrial company. And also revenue growth uh, has been impacting, of course, by the spin-off. So I'm not looking too much at that number. However, the credit rating of A1 is really good for an industrial company. Last but not least, they have not been, in my opinion, when I look at uh, return on invested capital, versus the cost of capital not creating so much value they use R R O C E as we saw that stands around 15 in that case they would have like a six seven percent wealth creation it's up to you which number you use i try to be consistent and therefore i'm using a uh, return on invested capital when we then look at the earnings estimates from analysts, you can see here that they are assuming around eight on average in earnings next, next year. In that case, the company will be on a forward earnings trading around 17 or 18. My expected earnings are a bit lower because these are adjusted earnings that the analysts are using here. And generally, I think that er analysts are always overestimating in general. So I'm a bit more bearish in as an investor, but it has been doing me well so far. So let's now look at what I think the company's worth based on a discounted cash flow calculation. So I'm using a, an approximately 6.5 billion free cash flow as an estimate for the basis of my calculation. I know that this year was around 8.5, but I see it a little bit on the high end. I don't expect it to continue like that. And we have seen that over the past, the free cash flow was more hoovering around 6 to 7. I expect this still to be a little bit the case, and I find this a more conservative way of calculating the future price of this company. Based on that, I'm also a little bit less bullish than the company itself when it comes to the growth rates. Yes. I think they are really well positioned for the future. They've been really recalibrating their portfolio into high margin businesses. But I've also seen that they have been doing that already for a few years and their expectations have been falling behind to what they are thinking themselves behind, uh, about it. So that's why I'm a little bit more bearish on this. Hence a 4% growth rate uh, in the upcoming five years than a 2% growth rate thereafter. With a discount rate of 10%, I would like to make a 10% return on this one and a terminal mul multiple of 14 I think on average you get for a company 15. This is an industrial, so I want to be a little bit more bearish. That's why I'm on 14. Optimistic case 7 and 4, and the bearish case almost no growth. Because if we would have economic headwinds now, that might turn us into a no growth area for Siemens. Hence, a uh, terminal multiple of 12 of that as well. If we look at it then, I believe that the company is fairly valued at around 116 euros. And with a margin of safety, I, I think that the buy price should be in the low 90s. So if you're interested in this company, you would like to initiate a position, I think around 116 is good. Um, but if you really want to get it on a deep discount, just wait until it's uh, in the low 90s. We have seen that it, the company goes there from time to time. During the pandemic, it went all the way to the 70s. And also in 2019, 
19 you had several times to pick it up in the low 90s here as well um, i think the first bottom will probably be around 120 what is good to know the company is currently yielding around 2.75 percent so at 133 it will be around three percent yield and at 100 euros it will be four percent yield i think really around 100 euros you can consider me a buyer Having said that, let's quickly recap. Um, I think they have a strong catalyst and mode. I think they did excellent over the last decade, specifically co uh, compared to a company like General Electric. However, I would like to see better earnings growth. I, strong free cash flow is actually really there. The cash flow looks much better than the earnings itself. They have a healthy balance sheet, dividend safety, you know. I think the sa dividend is safe, but what we have seen when they spin off companies and those companies don't return dividends, that's why it's not uh, the most optimistic for me in, 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 in light of thinking about dividend safety. And last but not least, I think their valuation is uh, quite overvalued at the moment by almost 30%. So I'm currently staying away from this company. I own shares in this company, but I don't find it attractive to add any further shares at this moment in time. Having said that, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below the video or contact me via social media, either Twitter, Facebook or Gmail. Enjoy the weekend and see you next time.